Throughout the month of July, I played 35 different board games and decided to rank them and come up with the top 10. Starting with number 10, Homeworlds. This is a game that I only played on Board Game Arena. I believe it's a part of a series where they use like translucent pyramids. This is the first of which that I've played. It's a heavier, meatier two-player abstract game. Basically, you are using homeworlds or planets and ships to take actions throughout the game, all with the sole goal of capturing the opponent's homeworld. Basically, what you're doing is moving, trading, building, and capturing. That's the only things you can do uh, beyond a few special things like sacrificing. Throughout the game, you're going to be taking actions, moving your ships across the board, attempting to make it over to your opponent and capture their homeworld. But the twist here, the interesting thing going on, is that you can only take the actions that correspond with the ships and planets that you're on. So if I'm on a yellow planet, which means move with a red ship, I can both move and capture with that ship but I cannot build or trade, which is the green and blue actions. Really, all this boils down to is an incredibly thinky and one that I've yet to fully wrap my head around, but one that I very much enjoyed. My first play was like, I don't understand what the heck's going on. I lost immediately. The second play, I think I won, but barely. And like the third and fourth play, I, I was kind of getting it. I was getting into the groove of the things and I really want to continue to visit this more. It's one that I would honestly like to own physically because I think it would be even better with the transparent pyramids, but one that might be a bit too heavy for someone like Danielle or Doolin even. I mean, obviously Doolin and Danielle can both play heavy games. I'm just not sure if it would really be one for them, but I'd be happy to find out because I really enjoyed it. That's number 10, Homeworlds. Number nine is another game that I've only played on Board Game Arena. You're gonna see that the top half of this list are mostly digital plays. This is Space Empires 4X. This is a traditional GMT 4X game, which is explore, exterminate, expand, and uh, X-Wing. I don't know, I forgot. I did a whole video talking about 4X and I've already forgotten. But this is a really interesting one. Um, it's Honestly, I was incredibly scared. It's like there's multiple sheets that look like Excel spreadsheets. Um, the board is just hexes, but really it's not all that complex. And ultimately it's just a game about exploring, expanding and exterminating and whatever the other one is, X-Wing. But basically you're just navigating spaceships around the map and capturing other planets, fighting your opponent, rolling die. It's a luck based game that die play a, a heavy factor in the game, but obviously there's enough strategy in how you build your ships, your tactics, how you maneuver around the map. And ultimately it's a nice, long, meaty experience that at least over async play honestly worked pretty well. Um, you have like the income phase and you need to go out and mine things with your miner ships, but then they're kind of worthless come in game. You need to scout things out with your scouts, but then bring in your heavy gunners to take on the lead and fight. Very intriguing. I've only played this one time, but I really want to play it again. Number eight on my list is one of my favorite games of all time. This isn't a top 10 games of all time list. It's just top 10 experiences of this month, which is why Root comes in at number eight. I do have it physically, but these plays that I had in July all came from the app. It's still one of my favorite games of all time that you'll have to wait until our top 10 list to see exactly where it ranks. But I had amazing experiences with it, as I did with all of these. Uh, basically, it would be higher on the list if I played it more and if I had some uh, more incredible moments this month. There are other games above it that I've played only more recently, so they are kind of the hotness to me. Um, but still, absolutely adore this game. I don't know how many play times I actually played it this month, but I would say at least half a dozen, if not closer to ten. Honestly, probably more than that. It's a great game. I love it so much. And it comes in at number eight on my list. Number seven on the list is another game that I've only played digitally, though I have played it probably over 20 times in the past three months. This is Clans of Caledonia. This is not a game that I would have thought I'd loved as much as I do. It's a Euro game, it's got that farming theme, but I just really enjoy the puzzle. Basically, uh, you're trying to, throughout five rounds, score glory based off round objectives, score points based off turning in, uh, contracts, score points based off um, being the most spread out across different areas of land, and really all those things combined are just really engaging and interesting to me. And every single time you play the game, you pick a clan, and most times it's gonna be different from the one you played last. And that really just changes up the strategy entirely. There's some times where if I get like the milk clan, which is apparently really powerful, I will just build as much cows as I can or, or 
harvest, ha have as much cows as I can and never actually make cheese, I'll just sell off the milk. And then I'm flush with cash to do anything that I want and complete as many contracts as I want. And it's great. And then another game, I may have the one guy that has to start on the outside edges and really work my way in to try and get different places and score for that. And it's just very unique and different every time I play. Um, I, I don't know if I'm good at it. I don't know if I'm following strategies or metas, but honestly, I just have a blast with Clans of Caledonia. It's chill, it's fun, and I just, I just really enjoy the puzzle that it provides. 20 plus plays through and still just pressing rematch every time we finish up. Number six on the list is a game that I've owned physically, loved physically, eventually sold because it's on Board Game Arena, and I just continue to fall more and more in love with it with Board Game Arena. It is also flying up the ranks like Clans of Caledonia, and this is another CO, but instead of COC, it's COB. This is Castles of Burgundy. This is a game that is just one of those like tried and true classic Euro games. I just, I just love the variable puzzle. It's another one of those things like Clans of Caledonia where every time you start the game, you have a different board and you have different things that are happening on the actual like market, whatever you wanna call that, where you're able to pick up new tiles and you have to play against your opponent, right? It's one of those games, kind of like Azul, where especially if you played it two players, you're doing your own thing, you're doing your own thing, building out your own map, trying to complete all the own objectives that you can, but you're also fighting and hate drafting. And I love that about it. When I play two player, I go ship heavy because I want those first actions. I wanna be able to take the important, all important crucial mines and castles off the board before they have a chance. When I play a three or four player, take all the ships you want. I'm probably not getting what I want anyways. So let me just not even touch ships and focus on everything else that I can control. Obviously, that's not a one size fits all. I don't do that every single time, but I just love how it feels different at all player counts. It feels different based off who you're playing, how they play, how aggressive or hate drafty they are, and what tiles hit the board. It's also got that such a nice, satisfying play where you're like rolling right, where you just combo things, right? Like if I place a castle, it allows me to pick up this or place this for free. And when I place that, it allows me to pick up something else. And when I place that, it allows me to pick up something else. And you can pull like four tiles in a single turn if you're just comboing placings and picking ups and whatever off the bonuses. All the different tiles that come out, the different science tiles you see every game really just adds to a wonderful experience that I've already enjoyed a lot and then more recently as I've played it more often and more often and racked up more and more plays, it's, it's shooting farther and farther up my list. I just, I just love Castle of Burgundy. I did not back the Awakened Realms version, and now I very much regret that. It's another game that I'm not sure how often I'd actually play physically, but I kind of want that option regardless. Number five, again, digital. I swear, after this, none of them are digital. The top four, all physical. But number five is another game just like Castles of Burgundy. Had, sold, played it on Board Game Arena a ton, and out shooting back up the ranks. That's Seven Wonders Duel. This is a game that I've always liked, kind of like Castle Burgundy, got rid of because I didn't see the table all that often, and then started playing it on Board Game Arena, and just, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I was actually playing in the All You Can Board tournament for both Seven Wonders Duel and Castles of Burgundy this month, and that has been half the reason why I've enjoyed it so much. All these very tight, competitive games. I think I am in the top six for Castles of Burgundy, and I finished like eighth. I only dropped one game of Seven Wonders Duel, but it was to the person that finished first. Uh, just such a nice, tight game. I like to start every game with an open mind and then I see what's in front of me and what my opponents are going for. Most times people sleep on science, especially if there's a law token in there. You probably don't understand what this means if you've never played the game, but just strategy wise, I love taking the various routes I can go. If I start with science and halfway through I realize that ain't happening, this is a victory point game, then I shift. If I see an opening for military, I shift. I just love that every single game you can go for a different thing and you're not always guaranteed everything you need. Not every single tiles in the game, the flip is different. You know, you might get this flip this time and that flip this time and not every single tile you could ever want, but it makes for a game that is interesting, exciting and different every time you play it. Uh, I just absolutely love Seven Wonders Duel. It's again, shooting up my ranks, such a good game. I promised you we're into physical games, played all the top four physically, starting with number four, Reiner Canizia's Babylonia. It's a great game. 
It's a great game. It's been on my top 30 for a long time, maybe even top 20. It's one of those things where Doolin and I wanted to revisit it before we did our rankings coming up. And so we did, we played it with Kenny um, and it was just an absolute blast. I love it very much. It's one of those games that uh, the more I come back to it, the more I appreciate it. It is just so uh, tight and playing at any player count is exciting. It trims the map down from four to three to two. So it's always tight. There's always people that are going to get the routes that you have to cut off and you might have a runaway leader in this game. That's just kind of the way it is. The scoring in this game is multiplicative and you're going to continue scoring more and more and more as the game goes on. And uh, I think I lost by like four and Kenny won and Doolin was mad because I was like coaching Kenny, which I mean, fair, but like, <laughs> it's just such a good game. It's one of those that it's absolutely brutal to play because you want to stop someone from doing something, but you also want to complete your own thing and you can't do both at all. It's just like, ugh, it's so brutally hard to decide what you wanna do in this game, to help yourself or to hurt someone else. And eventually you just have to pick one and roll with it and hope for the best. And I really, really, really just love the way this game plays. It's also pretty, also excellent components. Top notch, Babylon needs a hit. I freaking love this game, so good. Number three on my list is another game that I've played physically. And yes, listen up, you're hearing this correctly. I played it solo two or three times, I can't remember. And that is Too Many Bones. I played Too Many Bones Undertow solo. I used Nugget as my character in both plays. I think she is great. She is very beginner friendly and very solo friendly, I find. She can hit from a distance. She can hit from up close. She can get better loot. She can abuse the order of the battle queue. She can mess with baddies and make them hit for less or defend for less or move less. You can dash with her. Honestly, she's kind of the one size fit all gear lock that really makes this game, um, I don't want to say better, but like it makes it more approachable because she's such a such an interesting like tool. Just like, what what is it called? Like the Swiss Swiss army knife. She's the Swiss army girl. And I absolutely love it. So fun. Uh, like I said, I'm not a solo gamer. This is one of the first times that I've actually truly sat down and played it solo and I had a blast. Uh, I was trying to relearn the game and I relearned it one night and the following night played it twice over. I made sure I beat the the, uh, the, the bad, the tyrant that I was coming up against with was Colossus, Colossum, I think. I can't remember his name, the big bad gorilla. And the first time I got there and I was like, oh, I built, I built way wrong to fight this guy. And so I changed up my build the second time through and it was great. I really, really like Too Many Bones. I'm really looking forward to sinking my teeth even more into this game. And you'll hear more about another game from Chip Theory that I am just, oh, so excited to play. And yes, it's solo only. You'll hear more about that later. Not in this video, but coming up soon. So make sure you subscribe if you aren't already when we talk about our Gen Con updates and all those things. Now, number two, a game that I have loved, I've championed, not a lot of people are championing this game. I'm a, I'm a hipster when it comes to this game. We have a gameplay video, one of my favorite videos on our channel. We played it again, once again, to make sure it still fit the top echelon of games. And I can confirm to you now that it absolutely does. I'm not sure where it's gonna land in my top games, but I had a blast playing Cosmic Frog. This is Devious Weasel Games, Jim Felly. This is a game about two mile high frogs fighting each other, stealing lands out of their gullets, throwing them up, regurgitating them into their vault. And yes, it's as wacky as that sounds. I played with uh, Kenny and Doolin, and Doolin I think still likes it, but doesn't love it. I think Kenny was more on my side, more enthralled with how unique and interesting and unlike any other game Cosmic Frog is. I love it for how fighty it is, but also there's the entire puzzle mechanic, and also there's asymmetric abilities, and also the turn order is just wacky, and you never know if you're gonna go five times in a row, or if you're gonna go every other, or if you're gonna be skipped for a whole eight turns, you never know, and I love that about it. It, it is absolutely, positively wild and weird, and it doesn't shy away from that, and I just love how fun it is to play. The components help, it's beautiful, the neoprene mat, the miniatures, the chunky tokens. I just adore Cosmic Frog, and if you haven't tried it, I very much recommend you do. Not saying it's gonna be a hit for you, 
but it's, it's unique and unlike anything you've ever played and you owe it to yourselves to at least try it if given the chance. That is my number two game of July, Cosmic Frog. Moving into number one, you're gonna hear more about this game moving into the future in both new videos, top 10 lists, whatever. I don't wanna stop talking about this game because I love it so, so much. It kind of came out of nowhere and it's taken me by storm in the month of July and I hope that it doesn't stop doing that. I hope the pedal continues to stick to the floor and this continues to rise up my ranks as one of my favorite games of all time. And that is Blood on the Clock Tower. I actually got to play it just this past weekend at Gen Con with a few random people I didn't know as well as the Off Meta YouTube channel as well as Charlie Thiel. It was a great, great time. But in July, I think I played this 10, 11 times in a span of two, two and a half weeks. Granted, three of those were physical, not including the one from this past weekend, and the rest were all digital. We're actually playing it a lot over in our Discord, trying to get one, two nights to play every single week, and I just adore it. This is, to me, the quintessential social deduction game. As someone who has loved social deduction games and loved One Elton Werewolf, but never thought I'd actually see a return to this kind of game, Blood on the Clock Tower is that. It is everything I wanted them to be, and I will stand it until the day I die. I am just smitten with this game, and I have an absolute riot of a time. And I do think that eventually we'll do a full review, and eventually maybe I'll have, maybe I'll have Kenny, Danielle, and Doolin on for that full review, because I want to talk about the experiences that we all have. And one thing that has made me love this game even more than it should have, I knew I would love this game, or I was very certain I would, but I love this game even more because Danielle is just as smitten with this as I am. Okay, that's that's a lie. No one is. No one is. No one can possibly be as smitten with this game as I am. But Danielle is also really enjoying Blood on the Clock Tower, and she is someone who hates social deduction games. She never liked One Night Ultimate Werewolf. She never liked The Resistance, and she was very pensive to play this one for that reason alone and it's just a blast. I'm not kidding you when I tell you that some of the best nights are playing Blood on the Clock Tower digitally with friends over to the Discord for three and a half hours, and it's midnight, and we go to bed. Danielle and I go upstairs, and we lay in bed, and we stay up until 1 a.m. talking about our, our games that night, our Blood on the Clock Tower experiences. What would have happened if the Poisoner did this, or what would have happened if this person nominated the Virgin, or what would have happened if this was not a bluff, and all these things that happen throughout the game, this and that, what ifs, what ifs, it's so much fun. Just theory crafting with her, it's a blast. It's the most, it's the most I felt connected to her over a board game in ages, and we just have a riot of a time playing, theory crafting, sitting in bed, discussing things that have happened and how exciting it was and how upsetting it was and all of those things that have only been realized because of Blood on the Clock Tower. It's just, it's incredible. I am in love with it. Everyone who I talk to in the Discord in real life knows I'm in love with it. I talk about it nonstop. I've told people at work. I've talked to Danielle, obviously people that have no interest in it. I've tried to recruit D&D friends. I've recruited friends that I used to play League of Legends with years ago. Literally, it has brought together people that I haven't played with in a year and a half because I stopped playing video games as much. And I reached out to them, I was like, hey, do you wanna play this game? And now every week we're interacting and we're playing and it's just, it's, it's more than a game at this point to me. It's more than just Blood on the Clock Tower. It's a shared love of Blood on the Clock Tower that I can experience and discuss with me, with Danielle, with my friends Alex and Dustin and Ryan and all these people that I've been friends with for ages but didn't have like a sole thing to really connect with, at least since League of Legends and stuff like that. And it's just been an absolute joy to continue playing and I cannot, cannot wait to play it again. I think we're gonna play tomorrow night or tonight or whatever in the Discord and I just wanna get back to it and I wanna see what, what the game has to offer. We're still only on Trouble Brewing. There's still so many more roles and scripts that make the game even more unique and wild and I cannot wait to get my hands on that. But as it stands, in the month of July, 
Blood on the Clock Tower was the favorite game that I played. Thank you for listening to me rant and rave about all these games for the past 30 whatever minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to talk to you more about all of these games in the near future. We'll see you next time. Thanks for your support. I love you very much.